Welcome to church on this last Sunday in January. I'm Pastor Corey Conran, and I want to welcome you here to this time of encountering God, of fellowshipping with one another, of being encouraged and equipped to be the people of God in this world. If this is your first time here or your hundredth time here, I am so glad you've chose to gather together today with this body of Christ at Cooperville UMC to worship our God. Know that you are loved and, and we are so thankful that you're here today, even when we have so many things that are going on in our lives and in our world that just are overwhelming and fear inducing. Know that we have a God who is over it all, a God who's in control and a God in whose presence you are in right now, right wherever you're at. As we enter this time of worship, I want to invite you to take a moment and head to our website, coopersvilleumc.org, and click the connection card button at the top of the page. There, just fill that out. Let us know you're here today. Um, if there's anything we can do for you, any contact information or any ways that we can pray for you, fill that all out there, please. Also, right below here, click the like button and the share button. Let um, so that you can share this message with others on your uh, news feeds. Also, comment below and greet those that are worshiping with us today. I want to invite you to join me as as we start our time today to join me in prayer to our God. So let's pray. Lord our God, we gather today to give you thanks and praise. You are great and holy and mighty, and. Most times we forget or we take that for granted. But today in this moment, Lord, we praise your awesomeness. We give thanks for your power and your wisdom and your grace and your love. You promised that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So as we enter this time of worship today, may our worship be done in spirit and in truth from hearts that truly seek to honor you, Lord. And may we be blessed by being in your holy presence this day. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all God's people said, Amen.
at the beginning of the new year, congregations of the, the Wesleyan tradition, Methodist tradition, we renew our covenant with God by saying the Wesleyan covenant or by using the Wesleyan covenant prayer as a way of, of recommitting ourselves to God and reminding us what it means to be followers of Christ. Now, we've spent the month praying this prayer as a way of doing just that, of, of recommitting our life to God and to serving him faithfully. I hope that through praying this prayer, you've grown closer in your connection with God and your commitment to living holy lives. So this, I mean, this is what people called Methodists do. We, we pray this prayer each year as a way of encouraging one another and ourselves and of reminding us of our commitment to God. So we're going to pray the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer one final Sunday this month. So if you're serious in your commitment to God, and in growing in your relationship with him and your service to his church, then would you join me now in praying this prayer? I am no longer mine, my own. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, a wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. I want to introduce to you today um, our final guest preacher for the month. Yep, that means that you get me back next week for better or for worse. Today, we'll be hearing from Pastor Sidney Itzinga from the Marne United Methodist Church in our neighboring town of Marne. I also, I also met Sydney at Asbury Seminary, but interestingly, she's actually from around here in Coopersville. Now, one of the things that I love about Pastor Sid is she is passionate about God and about helping people grow closer to God through prayer. So I'd like to invite you to listen and hear the word from God that she has to bring us today. Good morning. I'm Pastor Sid. I'm the pastor of Martin United Methodist Church. I'm glad to be able to share with you today Today's scripture passage is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It's, it's one of the shortest Bible verses, and, and I'm sure you can all learn it with me today. In fact, the Bible verse is this simple. I don't even need to hold, pull out the book. It's this simple to remember, more difficult to do. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. The Apostle Paul tells the people in the church of Thessalonia, pray never ceasing. Pray never ceasing. Many years ago, I met a man, and when I encountered him, I had a strong spiritual sense that he had something important to teach me. He was a good friend, and over the years, I, I really listened to everything he had to say, and I just really felt there was something he needed to tell me that I needed to hear and as time went on, he never said anything profound. So one day I went to his office and I said, Paul, I've had this sense. There's something really important you're supposed to tell me. If there was something really important that you had to tell somebody, and it was just one thing, what would that be? And Paul thought for a minute and he said, and interesting, his name was Paul as well, like the apostle Paul, who wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, but my friend Paul said, I think if I could tell anybody the most important thing anybody could ever need to know, the most important thing anybody could do to change their life is 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. Okay, all right. 
that seems like a really profound thing I should, I should absorb. And, and I went home and I thought about it. Pray without ceasing. Well, at that time, I was, I was doing a good morning prayer and some brief prayers over a meal. And, and I was doing a I'm sorry for all these things prayer at night before I would go to bed and protect me from these things, which is a long way from pray never ceasing. How do we pray never ceasing? Has, has the Apostle Paul given us a, a command and instruction for life that is impossible to keep? And he has not. And, and I learned about praying never ceasing. When I, when I read the book, The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. He's a Franciscan, was a Franciscan monk. And he worked many jobs throughout his time. He had been a soldier when he was young. He was injured in the war and was very crippled and, and dealt with a lot of pain and walked very hobbled and he was stooped over. But he said that the job that he had that perhaps connected him most to God was washing the dishes and cooking the food at the monastery. What would seem like grueling hours of scrubbing pans for Brother Lawrence was a blessing because it was a time of commune with God. See, Brother Lawrence understood what it is that we can all benefit from. Prayer in the spiritual realm is like breathing is in our physical realm. We, we cannot live without taking in air. Our bodies are designed to breathe it in, to use it to refresh, restore, oxygenate our, our blood, and then we exhale and we, we exhale the, the poisons and the carbons and the toxins and, and the process continues on and it's how we live the, the breath of life and the breath of the spiritual life is prayer. It's something we can do like breathing. In fact, it's something we're called to do like breathing. Too often in our culture, we think of prayer as an event. It has to be quiet. We have to close our eyes, I was informed by my seven-year-old nephew this weekend, that it doesn't count if you don't close your eyes, he said. We set aside time and we think, okay, we need to bow our head and we need to be very careful about the words that we use when we speak to God. We need to say just the right things, but the fact of the matter is, is we need to be in constant conversation with our God, in constant conversations. And if we were, if we were to keep ourselves in that constant dialogue with God, that constant awareness of his presence, would it not change the way we live our lives? The way we conduct ourselves? If, if we were fully aware of God's presence in the grocery store line, or, or when, when the person in line before us is just making things ridiculously long for everybody else, would we respond differently if we were in conversation with God at that time instead of with our faces and our phone or picking up the magazine in the aisle to look at the latest gossip? But instead to be in conversation with our God, that's the kind of relationship that he calls us to. Not a distant relationship where he's a God far away that once in a while we hook up with like a telephone call, but he's a God that lives inside of us, his spirit in us and amongst us. And we have the ability to, to keep ourselves aware of that, but we have to practice. Practice. That's why I love the title of his book, Practicing the Presence of God. That means making yourself aware in situations where you may not otherwise be aware. Yeah, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> so let's say you were going to go have a, a meeting with somebody that was going to be difficult. And, and before you leave, you know that you would be challenged to remain kind and gentle and compassionate in this meeting. Set a chair. Set a chair, an empty chair, that nobody else understands, but you know full well you've set that chair because you're making space at the table for the Holy Spirit, for the, the Spirit of God within us. 
set a cup of coffee in front of the empty chair so that you can be aware that we can have the kind of conversations with our God that we can with our spouse over coffee in the morning, that we can with our friends over coffee in the morning. That kind of constant conversation, even while meeting with others, even in the midst of dealing with our everyday life. To keep our focus on him, instead of on the chaos of this world. The, the disciple Peter was on the boat when, when Jesus walked on the water across the, the lake to them. And Peter looked out on the, boat, out on the water and, and he saw Jesus and, and Jesus stretched out his hand and, and Peter was able to step out of the boat and walk on the water to Jesus. How amazing. He looked straight at Jesus and walked towards him and walked on the water like our God. And then... He turned his head and saw the storm, and instantly he sunk. Jesus re reached under the water and pulled him up from underneath the water. When his eyes were focused on Jesus, he walked on water. When he turned his head to the storm, he sank. If we live a life where we are constantly aware of God's presence and we are in constant conversation, listening to him, speaking to him, just whispering, I love you to him, help me to him. If we live our lives with that kind of determination to keep our eyes set on the Savior, we too will be able to, to spiritually, at least, walk on water. Fortunately, we're too quick to turn our head to the storm and to sing. So, I'm going to invite you to do what I did. And, and I'll tell you, these three words changed my life forever. And, and our culture, we think that the most important three words, what would they be? I love you. That would be the three most powerful words. I disagree. Paul had, pray without ceasing. The three most important words that could change your entire life, your family's life, your church's life, your community's life. Pray without ceasing. And so I invite you to do this with me now. Simply ask God, make that so in my life. That's the cool thing. As Christians, we don't have to struggle and strive and try to make ourselves do the impossible. If we're called to do something, we simply ask God to help us do that. Pray with me, will you? Lord God, we come in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Paul told us to, to pray without ceasing, Lord. Make that so in our lives. Change us, transform us, Lord, that we will be people that are consumed with thoughts of you, not consumed with thoughts of chaos. Lord, may this year be the year where we can be people of prayer, people who spend more time talking about you and to you than they do about other people and what's going on that's not of you. Help us, Lord, guide us and lead us, transform us that we might be like your son, Jesus. Thank you that the creator, you of the universe, God who set the stars in motion, calls people like us to come and to talk to you. What an amazing thing. We give you all praise, all glory, and all honor. And we pray all things in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in the morning when we rise and in the evening when we lie down and in all of the moments in our day in between, we believe that you are with us and that you love us. We thank you, O oh God, for your eternal presence and your gracious care that follows us throughout our lives. And we especially thank you for your steadfast love, which always embraces us and walks with us. 
We thank you for the encouragement we have received today from your word as well and from all of these guest preachers we have heard this month. Grant us the strength of faith to hold on and to believe, Lord, even when the way seems unclear and even when our circumstances seem confusing and overwhelming. Help us to seek you in the good times and in the times of struggle so that we may live out our lives with faith and care and compassion, with service and with love. We pray today for those who are ill and grieving. We pray for those who are frightened and discouraged. And we pray for those who are weary and tired. Touch each one of these with your healing power and boost them with an infusion of hope, Lord. Bless also the caregivers and the loved ones and friends who reach out to them with help and encouragement and support. And be with us, O oh God, as we seek to be a community, to be a church where all are welcomed and where all are valued, where all are celebrated for the talents offered and for the gifts volunteered. For we know, O oh God, that we are created to be in relationship with one another and that we need the diversity of the various parts in order to be a whole functioning body. May we become and may we be more, may we more and more become that sacred holy body here at Coopersville UMC so that we may bring glory to your name and shine the light of Christ into all the dark places of this world. Father, hear us now as we pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So the month of January is just about over. I mean, it's nuts, isn't it? And so far we've introduced four New Year's resolutions based on scripture for us as individuals and for our church. We've resolved to get and stay connected with the local ch church community, to remain flexible and open to what God is doing, to slow down and take time to rest, and to speak the life of the gospel into the chaos of this world. Today, we get our last resolution. And I hope that all of these have helped you to form some goals and plans for your year. They will for our church as well. We're going to spend more time focusing on connection and flexibility, on slowing down and on sharing the gospel. And this week's resolution is one that we all need to embrace, to love our neighbors. I heard from several people now over how over lockdowns, they met their next door neighbors for the very first time. Why? I mean, why did it take so long? They reached out to see how their neighbors were doing, what they might need, and, and probably some because, you know, it was a really boring time. But regardless of the reason, people met one another. They got to know one another and they started building relationships with their neighbors. We've also seen churches come together more than I think I've ever seen before. Pastors and leaders crossed racial and denominational lines to pool their resources, to get food to the hungry, homes to the homeless, support for kids and family and education, and so much more. And they did this without any regard for the growth of their own church or ministry. I mean, they did it, we did it, simply to help our neighbors. So this year, let's find ways to reach out to our neighbors, those who live next door, those who we work with, and those that we get the chance to engage with wherever they may be. Be intentional about participating in outreach and service opportunities in your community. I mean, this is at the heart of God and it's part of preaching the gospel. In fact, Jesus himself said that loving your neighbor was one of the two greatest commandments. So our resolution this week to finish out the month of January, to love our neighbors.
Friends, thank you so much for joining us today at Coopersville UMC. Oh, we're so grateful that we could worship together, even as we're separated by distance. We'd love to worship together with you again. Um, we gather for worship every Sunday online and in person at our church building at 10 a.m. If you can make it in person, hey, we'd love to meet you and get to know with you, get to know you. If not, we'll be right here as well, and we can't wait to gather with you again. As we close today, just a few things to share with you. You know, I talk each week about our offering, about giving your financial gifts to support the ministry of the church because it's important. This is our act of worship. But the truth is, we wouldn't be the church. We wouldn't be able to do the things we do if it wasn't for the financial gifts of those who are a part of us. Um, I, I know that nobody likes to talk about money, but the reality is God has blessed us with our resources, not just to bless ourselves but to be a part of, to give to that greater work of healing the sick and helping the hurting and, and offering hope to the hopeless. See, our giving is the means by which God does this work in the world. So I'm going to ask you to give and to give graciously and generously and maybe even sacrificially. You can give on our website on the giving tab at coopersvilleumc.org. You can send a check in the mail. You can drop off your offering anytime you're in the building. But I do want to invite you to give because that is how we can continue this great work because of you, because of all of the yous that are gathered together, that bring their resources together and God blessing them and saying, hey, look what we have. Let's go do. Let's go reach people. Let's go share the love of Christ with all of our neighbors. So thank you for giving. Also, while you're on our website, make sure you click the serve tab there as well. It's not just about giving. It's also about getting engaged. And so you can serve in the ministries and the outreach and the worship of this church. There are a lot of opportunities there for you to get signed up. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Get involved today. As I leave you, as we leave, as we close this last Sunday in January, I want to leave you with this New Year's blessing. May the God who gave us the last year and the Savior who walked with us each day and the Spirit who filled us with abundant life, may that God grace this new year with peace and hope and joy each of our days. Amen. Friends, be blessed, and I cannot wait to be back with you again next week. Angels we have heard on I sweetly singing oh the plains and the mountains in reply echoing their joyous strain
Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Savior's 